Billy Luna. Okay. I am the most persecuted man or accused organized crime member, OC guy accused, I say, uh, in history. I just watched the John Gotti Jr. interview with Burner, Burner 415 on his channel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about the principles, John Gotti Jr. and Burner, and then I am going to just give you my impressions of the interview off the top of my head. I, uh, I watched it. I'm being driven in a car to San Diego and I watched the interview and I'm still in the car right now and I'm just doing this like live in a car off the top of my head. So I'm going to just tell you about like some of the mafia stuff they referred to, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to open up by telling you like who these people are. Please subscribe to the Billy Luna channel and like the video. Thank you. Who is Burner? Burner is a rapper and entrepreneur in the green space. But to say that he's in the green space is not giving Burner his full due because his company Cookies is more of a giant lifestyle brand that puts out a wildly successful lineup of hip apparel and a bunch of other products. When you hear Burner speak about his company, you know that this cat is not the typical stoner. He is highly intelligent and a hardcore entrepreneur. He speaks about logos and colorways, demographics, and other business and marketing related details. He's a real entrepreneur. Um, estimates of the worth of his company, Cookies, range from $150 million to $800 million. Who knows the true value? However, I would say that this brother is personally worth at least a quarter of a billion dollars. That's a billion with a B, my man. Burner is also a pretty good rapper. One thing that I personally appreciate about his rapping is that, is that his lyrics are comprehensible. I can understand everything that he raps. He's definitely not a mumble rapper, and thank God for that in this day and age. I'm not into mumble rap. Burner is coming up in a big way. His company teams up with numerous celebrities for strains of green and other products. Headquartered in San Francisco, Cookies is also actively involved in advocacy and social impact initiatives. Cookies opened their first retail store in 2018 in Los Angeles and has since expanded to over 70 retail locations in over 200 markets across six countries. The sky is the limit and the future is bright for this cat, Burner. John A. Gotti. You know, Burner and Gotti have been friends for a while. They're pretty tight. So John A. Gotti, obviously, is the son of the late John Joseph Gotti, or Senior Gotti. We call him Senior Gotti. We call Junior Junior Gotti. Uh, he was, you know, the once boss of the Gambino crime family in New York, one of the most iconic figures in crime history. The elder Gotti died of cancer in federal prison on June 10th, 2002, while he was serving a life sentence for murder and racketeering convictions. Uh, Junior Gotti has long insisted that he retired from organized crime after pleading guilty in 1999 to racketeering and agreeing to serve five years in prison. Junior was released in 2005. He was indicted four times between 2004 and 2009 on mob-related charges. All four of those trials ended in mistrial. Federal authorities appeared to give up when in 2010, they said in court papers, in light of all the circumstances, the government has decided not to proceed with the prosecution against John A. Gotti. Now, recently, alleged Philadelphia mafia boss Skinny Joey Merlino said that John Gotti Jr. is quote, 1,000% a rat because Junior sat down with the FBI in a proffer session. Joey Merlino says that he bases his assessment that Junior Gotti is a snitch on the fact that there's a 302 file that exists, which is basically a 302 file is a record of when the FBI sits down with somebody and the information that they do provide. And in this 302 file, Merlino claims that Gotti details different crimes and people that committed them and basically just inf provided the FBI with a bunch of information. Now, Junior Gotti and the Gotti camp claim that, you know, Junior is not a rat and that he was merely playing games with the government and never testified against anyone. He never in this interview mentioned Skinny Joey Merlino, and I'm curious if Skinny will have anything to say about this interview. My hunch is no, he won't. 
During this interview with uh, rapper Burner and Junior Gotti, they, the interview is conducted in Burner's compound. They sit down, they chop it up. Gotti is wearing a velour cookies tracksuit with a Gotti logo on the chest. Burner casually puffs a J during the interview. Overall, the interview was it's okay. It was kind of a little bit boring. I, at the end, Burner says that they're going to try to do a show with John Gotti Jr. I mean, John Gotti Jr. comes off as, as pretty intelligent. And articulate um and burner is a very kind of he's a smart cool guy but john is i mean he's not super entertaining to be honest with you he's not like you know to go back to the joey merlino skinny joey merlino he doesn't have the jokes of a joey merlino or maybe you could even say the charisma but he comes off as, as smart and knowledgeable i guess he's a history buff um they touched on during the interview i'm going to tell you kind of some of the mafia things that they touched on during the interview um john i guess did time with Vinny basciano Vinny basciano also known as Vinny gorgeous he's they called Vinny gorgeous because he owned a beauty salon Vinny gorgeous was the once acting boss of the bonanno crime family he got set up by his friend and protege, Dominic Cicali, uh, a Bonanno capo who flipped and testified against Vinny. And Dominic now owns a brand of vodka and has a podcast here on YouTube. And uh, Junior says of Vinny that uh, he is, quote, a good guy, a gentleman. Junior also tells a story about Angelo Ruggiero Jr. Now, of course, Angelo Ruggiero Jr. is the son of Angelo Ruggiero Sr., who was a very, very close friend of John Gotti Sr. when they were growing up. And uh, he, you know, followed him into the family. Some say he's uh, the cousin or nephew of Emilio Della Croce, who was the underboss of the Gambino family under Carlo Gambino. And he was John Gotti's mentor. And, uh, you know, Angelo, they called him quack quack because he had a big mouth. And this was kind of something that led to the downfall of Gotti because he talked about a lot of incriminating stuff on various wiretaps um, in his house. And then uh, on his daughter's princess telephone, his daughter's name was actually princess as well. And so that's what allowed the government to get the search warrant to, uh, you know, go into Paul Castellano's house. So, you know, and eventually this whole thing kind of came down the line to kind of eventually get Gotti Sr. The Gottis and the Ruggiero's are kind of like family. I believe Gotti considers this kid to be like a cousin to him. I don't think they really are cousins, but the families are like that tight. At one point in the interview, Burner asks Junior if he has PTSD from the ordeal of all the stuff he's been through. And Junior mentions that the rat from his last case claimed to have PTSD. He didn't mention this guy's name, but who he is referring to is John A. Light. John A. Light was a, a tough guy, and he was uh, Junior's former best friend in the life and involved in many, many crimes and murders with Junior. And then he ended up flipping and becoming uh, the star witness against Junior. And uh, of course, now John A. Light has a podcast with him and Gene Borello, who is uh, another rat uh, from, he was a low level associate from the Bonanno family. Junior asked Burner at one point if he considers, if Burner considers Junior to be a rat. Burner says, that he does not consider Junior to be a rat. Once again, he's, you know, I guess this touches on things he's been accused of by like Skinny Joey Merlino. Junior goes on to tell a story about some Colombo family guys back in the day, Joey Scopo and Wild Bill Catullo. They brought a 302 to Junior. A 302 is a document that memorializes you sitting down with the uh, FBI. And so they said this 302 was on another uh, guy named Benny Alloy. And they say this guy's a rat. And so, Junior said that he took the 302 to his father, John Gotti Sr., who was in prison, and Sr. said that Benny Alloy was no rat. And that it turned out that these, you know, he was right and he liked this guy. And these apparently this 302, Junior says, was a fake document leaked by the government. And of course, once again, this brings to mind Joey Merlino's accusations about Junior and 302. So I guess I don't know why Junior's throwing this story in. Maybe he just wants to discredit people being discredited by 302s.
Junior also mentioned Sammy the Bull Gravano and kind of a larger conversation about the abuses of the government and how the government needs to make deals with the devil and just terrible people like Sammy the Bull to bring down the likes of, say, John Gotti Sr. He touches on the fact that Sammy the Bull only did a small amount of time in prison, about five years, I think. I mean, it comes down from 19 murders to about six months per murder, as Skinny Joey Merlino pointed out. And uh, after the government did that, they forgave him for all that. They let him like basically walk on all those murders. And then they set Sammy up in uh, witness protection. Later, Sammy goes to Arizona. And as John Gotti Jr. says, it started pushing drugs to kids. And, you know, he blames the government and says, look, this is what they're doing. They're kind of like moving in serial killers to your next door in your neighborhood when they allow these people to do this. And they, they not only allow it, but they really support this kind of thing just to bring down who they want to bring down. Of course, Sammy the Bull Gravano is a terrible person who one of his murders was an innocent 16-year-old child named Alan Kaiser. One of the murders that Sammy the Bull Gravano confessed to and that he served a measly three months in prison for was the brutal slaying of a 16-year-old high school student named Alan Kaiser. Alan Kaiser was a Boy Scout and a painter whose artwork hung in the Brooklyn Museum of Art. Alan Kaiser was innocently walking his girlfriend home when the children had the misfortune of witnessing Sammy the Bull Gravano and his goon, Louis Melito, committing a drive-by shooting against an outlaw biker. Sammy would disgustingly say in a 2019 video that Alan Kaiser was quote-unquote high and ran at the armed gangsters as they committed the drive-by. In his book, Sammy implied that Alan Kaiser was a friend of the target of Sammy the Bull's drive-by shooting. These are all bold-faced lies that slander a child whom Sammy the Bull Gravano murdered in cold blood. And as for Louis Melito, with whom Sammy participated in the killing of the innocent child, Alan Kaiser, Sammy would have his good friend Louis Melito killed years later. 16-year-old Alan Kaiser was cowardly shot in the back of the head, murdered in cold blood because he was an innocent bystander to a drive-by shooting that Sammy the Bull was participating in. Sammy the Bull is a pretty glamorous and honorable gangster, huh? Billy Luna. Burner is a very cool guy. Um, I like what he does. I'm impressed by him. However, uh, this was a little bit dull, I must say. This was a little bit dull, and I don't know if uh, a show could be sustained. Now, if Junior Gotti has a show where he's going to go into mafia stuff at length and talk about situations like that you got it that sounds cool now junior had mentioned that he's trying to cut deals in hollywood to do something with his witsec mafia show which is basically where he kind of goes after rats you know so this is this is interesting um so we'll see what's to come and of course as usual let me know what you all think about in the comments. And once again, you know, I know that there's people on one side, people on another side. I'm not on any side, okay? My disclaimer, I'm an observer and I'm a writer, okay? So I observe and I come back and then I throw it in your court and I want to hear from people on one side. I want to hear from people on the other side. If you're team skinny Joey Merlino and you don't like Junior, let me hear about it. Let me know why. If you're team Junior, you don't like skinny Joey, let me know that as well. We'll see how this develops, and as usual, I will keep you abreast. Ciao. Billy Luna. Please subscribe to the Billy Luna channel and like the video. Thank you.